I was an assistant but I was filling in for Ted Ralston this week on uh, where the drone leads and uh, this week um, got my slate board here got a brand new Inspire 2 sitting in front of me and wanted to talk uh, a little bit about where the industry is heading with regard to commercial and industrial use uh, with drones here uh, not just in Hawaii but also nationwide and around the world uh, there are a number of great people that are actually out doing uh, some amazing work here in the film industry here in Hawaii and uh, also in LA. Uh, one of the guys that uh, I think has been an inspiration to a lot of folks is uh, Mike Fortin of Cinedrones. He uh, started flying drones, uh, doing commercial work a few years ago under the initial 333 process and he was one that was a staunch advocate of doing things the right way and working with the FA uh, trying to um, introduce drones into uh, you know, movies and doing it, you know, having a, a process by which to do this. Uh, in the past few years he now has become one of the most sought out uh, individuals to do uh, projects or TV shows, movies, commercials uh, with drones in, in Hollywood and I really applaud uh, the efforts that he has done. Another great guy here locally, uh, Calipinto, Sky's the Limit. Uh, currently working on the Inhumans project. Yeah, big budget project, multi-film, multi-films uh, that are going to be done here in Hawaii, and TV show uh, that's going to be done. And uh, another true professional who was really passionate about utilizing drones in movies and getting the shots that you just can't get any other way. Um, one of the items that's sitting right next to me here is uh, a new uh, DJI Inspire 2. Uh, what makes this particular drone kind of unique is its ability to record uh, in 5.2K. Yeah, that's right, more than 4K, more than your current TV can uh, currently display. But a 5.2K raw video in a couple different formats that make editing uh, really uh, amazing uh, opportunities for uh, the editors for a film. Um, it's on par or better than some other cameras that are out there that are currently in use. and. Um, and it just gives you a different perspective on how you capture the scenes and stuff. Um, you know, it's nice to see some of the uh, technology that's leaning in this direction and making this uh, more affordable. It's making the ability to do, uh, like I said, TV commercials, TV shows, uh, movies, give you an aspect and a view that you just have never really seen before. And sometimes you have no idea that it was actually captured by a drone. And that's really what I think directors want too. They don't want people to say, ah, oh, that's a drone shot. And I know a lot of folks that uh, <clears throat> see stuff on uh, TV, YouTube and stuff, that's, you know, you kind of occasionally catch that and it's like, ah, oh, that was a drone. You'd rather just it not be uh, the focus of what you're actually viewing. You just want a spectacular shot that you've maybe never seen before. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the industry itself has, uh, move to embrace the utilization of drones and here in Hawaii with the number of film projects that uh, come to the come to the state uh, I think we'll start to see more and more of that uh, recently you had the release of the movie King Kong uh, it was you know multi-million dollar uh, infusion of um, basically revenue to the state of Hawaii for people to uh, work on that film um, that provided tax revenue here to the state uh, current in humans project and other films and I think you're going to start to see more and more of this as commonplace in a lot of um, a lot of things that are going on and uh, another great cinematographer uh, Eric Sturman just recently returned from Vietnam using this particular drone uh, filming inside the largest cave system largest caves in the world in Vietnam uh, it was part of a National Geographic project uh, a couple years ago and then he was asked to come out and use this particular drone to film inside the caves. Uh, it's going to be spectacular when that's uh, seen. We also um, had uh, sold some equipment to uh, a company that was hired by the federal government to do a project to show uh, the northern Hawaiian Islands and Midway and other locations in IMAX and also using uh, this particular drone uh, to record it for posterity, I guess, and also to share it with the rest of the world. Um, you know, so th there's a lot of um, good that can come out of using this technology uh, for, like I said, um, TV, movie, and film, documentary, and be able to get some of those shots that you just would not get really any other way. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, 
the school system you know, here in Hawaii, one of the things that uh, you know, we're kind of big on is to encourage uh, you know, STEM education. We've been trying our best to support a number of different programs here in the state. And uh, it is really a, uh, a passion for us. And we see an opportunity to where um, utilization of drones, uh, more so in TV film uh, production, you know, leads to job opportunities for the youth of, uh, of Hawaii. So the importance of tying you know, our STEM programs and the things that kids are doing in math, science, um, engineering type technologies and tying them back to the drones and then showing them how they're used uh, you know, in the long run uh, may expose them to some other great job opportunities that we're hoping to uh, see here uh, you know, in the state over the next few years. Uh, my partner George Purdy has been very uh, active over on Lanai, um, Maui, Molokai, and uh, it's, it's really great to see how kids are taking to some of this technology. Uh, <clears throat> one of the other areas that um, we wanted to uh, speak upon today too on the uh, commercial side but also on industrial use, um, you're starting to see a number of uh, new products come on the market that are specific for um, more specific for industrial use by cinematography. So obviously in the cinematography realm, you want something that is uh, very high resolution capability, uh, very uh, dynamic uh, ability to um, record video in different formats uh, that are perfect for editors. And then on the industrial side, really what people have been looking for is capability in um, uh, zoom, type capability for some cameras to be able to do inspections at standoff, uh, infrared uh, FLIR type camera systems, and then also um, with the um, uh, you know, added uh, flight time, water resistance. And so there's some new series of drones that are actually coming on the market specific towards that. Previously, uh, you'd seen in the industrial side where you were using for, say, power line inspections or inspections of uh, uh, power plants, um, Maybe you're doing um, archaeological research, other areas and stuff that you would see uh, usually hobbyist type drones that were utilized you know, in that fashion, kind of a, an ad hoc, hey, it works, it flies, um, I'll, I'll get what I can with it. So you're starting to see more um, uh, purpose-built products, I guess, on the market. And uh, those will be something you'll see more of here in uh, 2017. But um, one of the things, uh, we'll get back to the uh, film aspect again. Um, you know, here in Hawaii, we, we just have a tremendous opportunity. I would hope that, um, you know, as uh, viewers of this show, uh, when you have the opportunity to speak to your legislators, uh, that you, um, you know, mention to them that, uh, you know, Hawaii is a, is, a, is a finite economy. This is an area where um, the drone industry, you could say, uh, is an industry that's, that's growing that is uh, able to produce jobs, able to produce revenue, able to produce tax revenue, and uh, you know, high paying jobs too, to, that can give, uh, like I said, our youth an opportunity in the future. So as, as part of our mission, as part of working with Ted Ralston, who has just been such a staunch advocate of um, education and tying all of this together, you know, we, we see this as, um, like I said, future opportunity. Um, we do have a number of companies that um, right now currently uh, will bring personnel from the mainland uh, to be able to you know, fly for some of these projects that have happened in the past. We'd like to see that turn around to where there is uh, a large number of people here locally to pick from uh, with the equipment, with the, you know, uh, have yeah, flown, you know, on different projects and that, uh, that production teams can actually pick from. Uh, or some of the folks here locally can partner up uh, to work on some of these large projects. And that's another way that uh, Hawaii is quite different, where a lot of folks that work currently in this industry, um, you know, a lot of us know each other, and we work together quite frequently to uh, kind of make it happen, uh, to get things done for one another. And it's really uh, spectacular. So we want to see that continue, that, that aloha spirit uh, in this industry, and would like to um, I said, see this uh, opportunity continue to grow. So when you see your legislators, when you're out at some of these different meetings, or you're taking the time to write them and stuff, uh, say, hey, you know, there's, uh, there's a, a new industry in town, 
and I'm, I'm kind of interested and I think you should support it. Um, some of the legislative actions that Ted uh, has been working and we've been helping to support along with others, uh, we want to see some of the uh, current uh, attempts at drone legislation just be crafted in a manner that is uh, more conducive to the use uh, of drones for a lot of the projects that we just talked about and some of the commercial and uh, industrial realms. And uh, we, you know, with your support, we can, we can see that happen. So we're working towards that. Uh, we're working to tie all these things in together. So there's a, an educational aspect flowing through the colleges also for research, design, development, and then uh, local opportunity. But we also need a, uh, a legislative environment that is uh, very conducive to uh, not only commercial industrial use, but also as a sport and a hobby, that we, we have some common sense rules that work for everybody uh, in place. And uh, that's something I think that is going to be uh, happening as the year moves ahead and we work into uh, crafting some legislation, hopefully, for next year's legislative session. Uh, another area that uh, you know, we're starting to see uh, some big change, uh, a number of great stories, uh, was um, also in the police and fire departments. So um, over the past few years, police and fire departments have been able to do what's called like a public COA. They basically write out a plan, they would send it to the FAA and say, hey, this is how we're going to fly drones and this is what we're going to do. And the FAA basically would just bless that off and allow them to um, uh, begin their programs to do so. Um, the utilization of uh, drones and a number of um, police and fire uh, stations on the mainland, uh, we've seen a huge number of um, search and rescue events that have ended uh, very well, where people have been found, um, runaways, you know, have been found out in the, out in the forest. Uh, it's also been used to you know, track down uh, suspects after, you know, crimes. Uh, so there's a, a lot of opportunity right there, too, where uh, this type of technology can actually be beneficial in uh, saving lives and also be a bit of a preventative uh, measure, too. So once again, on the industrial side, uh, we have Ocean Safety, uh, who's worked very heavily here in the islands to uh, protect locals and tourists uh, with their lifeguards, monitoring that they have at the beaches uh, here in Hawaii. And um, we've... You know, once again, something else we've seen worldwide start to uh, happen is the utilization of uh, drones in an industrial sense uh, for monitoring for sharks. So uh, you know, we see proactive monitoring you know, as another option uh, for this type of technology then instead of being reactive after someone's actually uh, been bitten by a shark. So you know, there's um, a number of applications I think that people just aren't fully aware of uh, as they think of what you know, drones just take pictures, uh, drones just shoot video. Uh, scientific monitoring, you know, our uh, whale population out here is just continuing to grow every year with humpback whales. Uh, being able to monitor the whales from the air uh, as to numbers, size, um, movement action, you know, beneath the water and see what they're actually doing, you know, is another area where scientists can use them in an in industrial fashion that is uh, providing them a new avenue to research where aircraft costs maybe were currently uh, a bit prohibitive. So, and I was waiting to hear from the booth there from Missouri and okay, <laughs> hey, that's what it was. Hey, so we're taking a quick commercial break. Uh, we'll come back, to, I'll finish up and talking on a few other things. If you have anything, you can uh, tweet it into us, try to answer any of your questions. Uh, also, you can um, and we'll, we'll try to answer any of those questions that come up online. But uh, I'm Mike Elliott, filling in for Ted Ralston, Where the Drone Leads. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host for Moving Hawaii Forward. And the show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues in Oahu. Um, we are all frustrated by sitting in our cars uh, in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. And this show is dedicated to talking to, with folks that not only we can define the problem, but we hopefully can come to the table with some solutions. So I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 12 noon, and let's move Hawaii forward. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. 
We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Hey, I'm Mike Elliott, uh, filling in for Ted Ralston this Friday, Pioneer Plaza, downtown Honolulu, where the drone leads. Uh, just been chatting a little bit, uh, like I said, talking uh, commercial industrial use here in Hawaii and a little bit on uh, legislative issues and stuff affecting uh, the industry as a whole. Uh, really looking forward to, uh, like I said, getting some additional community support. Uh, if you ever have any questions on uh, what these things can and cannot do, uh, you can feel free to contact us at uh, Drone Services Y. We are, you know, always available, looking forward to uh, helping the community as a whole try to understand, um, you know, this technology, how it's being used, and uh, we're very much uh, supportive of the, uh, you know, the efforts of uh, HPD working with the FAA and uh, addressing any type of misuse. Uh, that takes place and stuff here uh, in Hawaii and addressing your concerns. And we'd love to work with any of you in any of the community groups that have any of concerns. So please feel free to contact us at any time. Um, like I said, I was talking with uh, regard to um, use in uh, cinematography uh, in this commercial and industrial uh, utilization here in Hawaii. Uh, just uh, about a, two weeks ago, well, one of the uh, films that's being done was shot just right outside uh, this building utilizing a drone and they'll be back out here uh, in, uh, this following weekend. Uh, they're going to be also out shooting some stuff out uh, towards Kalaialoa towards the end of the month. So once again, you know, um, getting that type of technology out there, using it in movies and stuff just gives you a really awesome perspective on a lot of things. And a lot of times you're watching some of these TV shows and you just have no idea that a drone was being used. And, um, you know, it's, it just gives the directors a different perspective and um, also the folks that are doing editing, you know, just gives them a different view on, uh, on getting some of these shots and stuff. And we really, really do want to see a lot of this, more of this happen you know, here in the state of Hawaii. Um, if you have any questions on any of this type of equipment or if you're interested in uh, pursuing, you know, type of uh, career in uh, aerial cinematography, I'd uh, be glad to put you in touch with some other people that are working in, you know, in this business, or in this industry here in Hawaii. Uh, Jonah Shaw, New Sky Perspectives. Uh, George Russell, who is uh, an incredible uh, cinematographer in his own right. And uh, you know, Eric Sturman, who's been doing great work on the North Shore for a number of years. Uh, Mr. Surf Video, I mean, he shoots some amazing stuff. It's unbelievable. Uh, Kella Pinto, like I said, with uh, New Sky Perspective, or uh, with uh, Sky's the Limit. And uh, like I said, if you're really wanting to go in the big leagues and stuff, check out some of the work that uh, Mike Fortin has done with uh, Cinedrones and his business over the past few years. He's also um, working on a new uh, the Bosch uh, series on Amazon. So he's been doing a lot of the drone aerials for that. Uh, he's done a number of Amazon uh, series and stuff uh, recently. So um, you know, some pretty cool stuff, and you just don't quite realize that, hey, that's, that's what it is. Okay. Hello? Hey, we've got a caller on the line. Uh, it's Mike Elliott. Go ahead. Hi there. Um, I hear you saying that, you know, people aren't um, wanting to see that drones are uh, actually being used for aerial footage. Now, they used to be very proud to show that helicopters, um, you know, shot aerial footage. So why wouldn't we want to know that drones are being used? Can you please tell me about that? Well, it's not that uh, a drone was used, it's just that uh, you don't want that to distract from what you're looking at. Uh, the drones are used, yeah, quite frequently. It's just that you, there's certain moves and maneuvers that uh, if a drone is flown improperly or a camera's operated improperly, uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to look at it and you're going to say, oh, that's a drone shot uh, and stuff. So, you know, it's just how that how it's flown. Uh, you just don't want it to distract from the overall, uh, uh, I guess, the scene and how it's how it's captured. And um, you know, you want to just kind of leave that open ended. Uh, you don't want that to be the focus of the person that's watching the the film, the 
uh, the TV show and realize that, oh, that, that's a drone shot uh, based on the type of maneuvers that basically were done for the drone itself. Okay, yeah. So, um, University of Hawaii, one of the things that uh, Ted Ralston is working very hard with the uh, university is uh, some coordination with some of the uh, various drone programs that are there. Um, there's the uh, engineering side, there's also a lot of the different uh, departments that are actually doing out there doing research and trying to coordinate some of this. And then also what you'll start to see, I think, over the years is uh, a bit more of a curriculum that is drone-centric. Um, we're starting to see some interest in some of the local schools uh, to formulate uh, some, whether it's some after-school programs uh, working through STEM or even some of the private schools who are interested in actually formulating uh, a, you know, a drone curriculum, uh, which would um, basically tie a lot of these things in and uh, show you know, some of these kids that there is a future path, I think, uh, you know, into this industry. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to um, the, uh, the opportunity that can be provided. Uh, like I said, the uh, state legislators should be very excited about the potential revenue from this type of additional work that would be involved in uh, film and hiring, you know, local talent to be able to uh, be able to do it. So we look forward to, um, you know, continuing those discussions through uh, follow-on legislative sessions and hopefully uh, getting some uh, some headway with regard to uh, the permitting process that uh, we've been dealing with with the uh, state city county and come up with a system that works for everybody uh, to allow uh, ease of utilization and uh, safety being you know the primary uh, concern a lot of film is often shot uh, closed set so if you come downtown Honolulu they're shooting Hawaii 5 or some other film or anywhere Usually it's closed set, it's blocked off, uh, there's no traffic access, no pedestrian access. And, uh, you know, in part of, part of that using, uh, you know, drones, that's a safety issue. So the folks that are on set, you know, they're aware uh, that these craft are being, uh, being used to shoot certain scenes. And that's part of the risk uh, uh, assessment that's being, um, as part of the overall process for their, for their utilization. Uh, so, you know, safety is paramount anytime you're using any of this technology. Uh, you know, if we have folks that are out just uh, flying drones for fun, you know, we ask that you always kind of um, use that as your initial um, starting point. You know, think about where you're flying, think about who's around, think about weather, uh, equipment conditions, because professionals that are out there doing this, and like I said, when I was out with uh, Kella Pinto a couple weeks ago, just seeing how his team was and putting everything together just prior to taking one simple flight shows you that it's very well thought out, it's very methodical, and safety is really the key concern in operating this equipment. No different than you would see in someone who was operating a helicopter or manned air, you know, uh, fixed wing aircraft in uh, shooting aerial cinematography for film also. So that level of um, uh, safety and expertise, you know, is, is there, it exists, and it's being uh, continually uh, matured and improved uh, with a number of great companies that are out there shooting, uh, not just here in Hawaii, but back in LA and uh, you know worldwide. So we're looking forward to um, you know, continuing that opportunity here in the state. And uh, you know when Ted's back on the show, we'll uh, talk about that. I'll get Calipinto out here, and maybe we can even Skype in uh, Mike Fortin in a future uh, uh, future afternoon if he's not too busy there in Hollywood. So uh, I. Uh, Look forward to any other uh, calls that you may have. And like I said, if you ever have any questions, you can contact us at uh, Drone Services Hawaii. We'd be glad to help with you with any of your issues or needs or concerns. And uh, the, yeah, so um, yeah, quick plug for us, uh, droneservices.hawaii.com. Uh, been in business for a little over two and a half years. We're trying to serve the local community here and uh, provide some capability that uh, you know, meets the needs of not just uh, hobbyists, sport, uh, but also professional industrial use also, and really appreciate the, uh, the opportunities that we've had in working with uh, a number of great people here in the state, and uh, look forward to the next uh, drone racing season that's coming up. Um, Aloha FPV, check that out on Facebook if you're interested in drone racing. Uh, Mike Kalma, one of the guys that works with us, um, is leading that up and is doing a, one hell of a job. Uh, he's also going to be flying at uh, UH, I think at uh, the stadium. Uh, this Saturday, 
as part of an event that you, uh, University of Hawaii is uh, sponsoring. And he'll be out there flying some race drones uh, and stuff for folks to check out. So we just want to kind of showcase some of that technology and that talent. And uh, Mike Kalma, Aloha FPV, that's the place to check that out for the future. So, all right. Hey, uh, I really appreciate this opportunity from uh, uh, Ted Ralston and the entire team here at Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we uh, look forward to just uh, you know, helping the community here. So honestly and sincerely, if you do have questions, please feel free to contact us at any time. We'd love to work with you, answer any of your questions, concerns. And if you're looking for any gear, we'd love to help anybody out that's out there. Um, Till uh, next time, and Ted has me <laughs> on again, either to host or as a guest. Uh, I'm Mike Elliott signing off from uh, Pioneer Plaza, downtown Honolulu, on this St. Patrick's Day Friday. So uh, it's time to grab a Guinness. <laughs>